Redeemer Church family, welcome back to our journey through John. Today we'll be looking at John chapter 7 again. We'll be in verses 25 through 36. I want to encourage you to go ahead and turn your Bibles to John chapter 7. If you don't have a Bible, I want to encourage you to listen along with us as we read God's Word together today. John chapter 7, starting in verse 25. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, Is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, and they say nothing to him? Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? But we know where this man comes from, and when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught, as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from. But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many of the people believed in him. They said, When the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little, while, a little longer, uh, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will seek me, and you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me, and you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. A few years ago, my family went on a vacation with some really good friends of ours, people who uh, we've spent a lot of time with, and our kids have spent a lot of time with their kids. We went to Nashville, and a part of the trip turned into a karaoke night. Um, several members of the group, mounted the stage, sang their songs, and I decided that I was going to brave it and join in the fun. Uh, so the song that I chose uh, that night was one of my favorites from my childhood. It was uh, Here I Go Again by the band White Snake. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, disclaimer, I would not encourage you guys to go and listen to this song. It's, it's a good song, but ultimately it's not a song that's about uplifting Jesus. It's not a song about uh, worship, uh, worshiping Jesus. Um, it was just a song I liked uh, when I was younger, and I, I really picked the song for two reasons. Nostalgia, and I knew most of the words. Because at karaoke, that's the scariest thing, is I'm going to get up there and not remember where the words go and not be able to sing it correctly. So I picked a song that I felt really comfortable with. And, and the, the first two lyrics uh, that the songwriter puts in there, he says this, I don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where I've been. I thought of this song when I looked at this particular passage, because... It's the antithesis of Jesus. Unlike the songwriter, Jesus not only knows where he's been, but he knows exactly where he's going. Jesus lived his life with a single-minded intensity, intensity and intentionality. He knew his life had purpose and direction. He lived with the will of the Father in his mind and guiding his actions at all times. Uh, to all times. So many of the people around him failed to understand his purpose and direction uh, and the direction of his life. They looked to him and that for his great teaching or his signs and wonders, but they failed to understand all of these things were leading him to the cross and his resurrection. Because they didn't understand where he was, where he had come from or where he was going, they didn't really understand him. Um, he knew exactly where he had come from and he knew exactly where he was headed. They thought maybe he was going back to the Greeks, or maybe he, he was going to go into the dispersion where all the Jews were scattered all over the place. They didn't, they didn't understand that there was a spiritual location that he was headed. And I think for us, it's right for us to be thankful that Jesus lived in this particular way. But I also think there's a challenge for us. Do we live with the same single-minded intensity and uh, intentionality uh, that Jesus lived with, with, being led by the Spirit with the will of the Father in his mind all the time? I want to encourage us, do we know where we're going? Are we living in a way where all of our focus, all of our direction is leading us toward Jesus? Are we running our race? with our eyes on Jesus at all times. Let's do this. Let's ask God, uh, and th first let's thank God that, that Jesus lived with this kind of focus, with his focus on the Father's will. But let's ask God to help us live in that same way so that we can live a life that makes a difference. Uh, I mean, we are never going to be to the point where we make the difference that Jesus made, but we can make a difference in the world if we live with the same kind of single-minded intensity and focus that Jesus lived with. Father, we come to you today and we ask, Lord, that you would help us to live with focus and uh, intentionality, 
we thank you that Jesus lived with your will on his mind all the time. And he filled your will, that he did exactly what you called him to do, Lord. And we thank you that that, that leads to our salvation. Um, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to live with your will in our mind all the time. That you would help us to live with that single-mindedness so that we might um, live a life that makes a difference. We thank you, Lord, that we do know uh, where we are from and we know that w where we're going, uh, and it's because of you. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.